That's the other part of fighting in streets. If a guy's got a knife and you don't, if you're able to show any of this video to your kid, just show that one. The guy's got a knife, run away. Problem solved. So in Lost Judgment, our hero has to fight a lot of different opponents at one time. And when you're doing that, you want to use a lot of blitzing straight attacks, right? You want to fight a guy moving forward to get them away from the people that are chasing you. So a lot of just punching combinations, get them going forward. Now a choke slam, if you're strong enough to pull it off, is a great one to fight because when you're fighting multiple opponents, you never want to be on the ground, ever. One-on-one, -on -one, it's fine, you want to be on top multiple opponents the second you're on the ground the dude's homies are going to come and kick you in the face so a choke slam is great because i can take them down without me going down i can stand above them and beat their head in. and a flying foot stomp always nice flying spinning i think that's the first thing they teach you in jiu-jitsu real white belt cool throw so he's on the ground but he got right back up right doesn't want to stay there long and a sliding knee to the head it's almost worth the mat burn you get from sliding your knee across the ground. And he just destroys this guy's shoulder. All right, so this move right here, a straight arm and pulling it the way that it is, it's hard to get it in like a mixed martial arts situation because a guy's gonna be able to roll with it. But if you can get the guy flat and make sure he can't, he's stationary and can't move, you can destroy a guy's pec by just pulling that apart. This bad guy had the right idea. If I'm throwing knees at my opponent, I've opened myself up for takedowns. Because normally when I throw a knee, I'm obviously on one foot. And my power goes backward. To throw a knee correctly, I gotta be going backwards. I throw my knee like this, boom, and I lean back. You wanna lean back when you're throwing a knee. And so when you're going backwards, that means you're open for takedown. Because I'm already leaning backward, I can just take the momentum with me. So he had the right idea. Luckily our hero has hips like a cat and he sprawled down on top of him and said, no, nope, you're not gonna take me down. Let me keep kneeing your face. The benefit of fighting with jeans on is that you've got protection, right? So if you're fighting on the ground, like you get mat burns when you're on just like good quality, like octagon surfaces, you still get mat burns. Imagine fighting on asphalt, your legs are gonna get destroyed. So you have the advantage of at least an extra layer of protection, but because these are kind of tight, he's not wearing baggy jeans, he's wearing tight jeans, you don't have a lot of movement. So Daisy Dukes would be better if you're standing up, long jeans better if you're on the ground. So big jumping kicking attacks. The advantage of having a lot of kicking attacks is that they're more powerful than punches and they have more distance. So I can attack a guy who's further away and with more power with kicks, especially if I'm just continuing the attack and moving forward, spinning kicks, keep the momentum going. The downside is it tires you out and you're off balance. But if you can stay on balance against multiple opponents, you can be very devastating with a bunch of kicks. Now, once you're fighting somebody with a bat, your strategy completely changes. You wanna be in one of two places, either completely far away, out of the range of his bat, or as close as possible so the bat is kind of rendered useless. If I'm swinging a bat, one, I need a lot of time to spin and use the momentum, right? I need time to be able to do that. Two, if I'm inside of that swing range, if I'm here and not here where the bat goes and I'm inside, I had the advantage because now his hands are taken up. He's off balance because he's swinging and I'm right up in his grip. So if I'm up in the guy's face, the bat's now useless and I have the advantage. I can do short attacks, little uppercuts, hooks, elbows, take him down whenever I want. And he's just some guy falling down with a bat. And a good soccer kick to the head when they're down. Always a good move. So you can tell our hero does all kinds of cardio work. Like he's on the treadmill forever because he can do these jumping attacks, spinning attacks, kick attacks constantly against multiple opponents for several minutes and not get tired. I do that for 20 seconds and I'm in cardiac arrest. See the second he tries to grab somebody and throw them, you know, the guy's friends come in and attack him. So this is better. A lot of blitzing attacks, a lot of straight punches, a lot of quick kicks. Now get up, 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 up. See, now he's isolated one guy. He's thrown him to the other side of the hallway so he can just work on kicking one guy and not have to worry about his butt. Jump off the wall for fun and start kicking guys in the chest. Certain MMA fighters 
could be better at fighting multiple opponents than others. So I could be a really good fighter, like I have really good wrestling, really good jujitsu, and I can beat somebody. But maybe the guy that I beat would be better against multiple opponents, because maybe he's a Muay Thai fighter or a boxer or something like that, where he can attack multiple opponents because he's a quick strike type of fighter. My fighting style, if I'm a wrestler, isn't great against multiple opponents because I have to get in close and I need time, I need to take him down. When I'm focusing totally on one guy and I need 10, 15, 20 seconds to take out my opponent, that's plenty of time for the other guys to come kick my head. If I could end a guy with one quick kick to the head and he's done in 0.5 seconds, I could move on to the next guy. This guy has a lot more efficient style of fighting. You know, kick to the leg, kick to the body, and then a punching combination. A lot less kind of jumping around and using a lot of energy. Just pop, 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 we're going to the next guy. Pop, 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 we're going to the next guy. Punching combination, he's hulking up. Gotta face him. Great way to pivot. So the bad guy here throws a giant overhand right, right? It's one of the most powerful punches you can do in combat because you got all this momentum, you're twisting your body. The further a punch travels, generally the more powerful it is. The problem is it takes a lot of time. Our hero, as a bad guy's throwing the overhand right, the guy circles behind him. And once you're behind somebody and they're in the middle of throwing a punch, one, they're off balance, two, they're not facing you. You can do whatever you want. Two guys with bats, two guys without bats. All right, so a foot sweep. Great takedown for fighting multiple opponents. If I can control the top of your body, I can use my foot to literally sweep your other foot out. So you've gotta be really good at handling momentum. You gotta be really good at handling leverage. I was terrible at him. I, one of my biggest regrets was not being good at foot sweeps. Cause if I can take a guy down right to side mount and I've only burned like three calories, that's a huge win. Plus if you're fighting multiple opponents, you don't have to worry about going down with them. If you can use their bat against them, definitely do it. Now he's whooping up these kids. Whoa! A good front kick to the kneecap. Great multi-opponent tactic because it's quick and you can render a guy a moment. And the sliding knee strike. He loves the sliding knee strike to a grounded opponent. Double punch. Again, foot sweep, choke slam, end in slow motion. Ladies love it. Jumping behind a guy, punching him behind the head. Double hammer fist. Punching combination. A lot of quick punches and then end with the left hand. Normally when you're throwing punching combinations, generally your last punch is your finisher. So all the other punching combinations are just setting up your last punch. Jab, right hand, left hook, uppercut, whatever it may be. Jab, right hand, hook, overhand, right. You're basically just setting them up, getting your opponent to start blocking. And if you're a really good striker, you're setting up your final punch. That's the one where you really lean into. You don't want to throw all your power into every punch because you're off balance, it goes a little slower, and you'll wear yourself out. Quick punches, and then end with the finisher. Walking along, blah, blah, blah. Now, you never want to just stand in the middle of the three guys you're fighting. Like, just keep them all in front of you. This guy's gutsy. He wanted to start in the middle with all the guys around him. Now he's just showing up. Face slam. And, of course, sliding knee knockout. Waiting for him to get up. You never let wait for a guy to get up. Kick their ass when they're down. You did all that work to knock them on their face, and now you're waiting for them to get up. Skateboard. Where did the skateboard go? He's put it in his back pocket. I would use the skateboard as a weapon, but maybe it's his only mode of transportation. Foot sweep, choke slam. Bam. So a very deadly punch. If I'm punching a guy when their head's up against a wall or in mixed martial arts, their head's on the floor and I hit them, bam, there's nowhere for your facial bones to go. It's just pure damage straight. So that's how you get a lot of broken orbitals, broken nose bones, broken jaw. The muscles have nowhere to go. It's break. All right, front kick to the face. Whatever that was, that was awesome. Jab, spinning attacks, and get back up. Yeah, you never want to be on the ground. Kick to the body, kick to the head, and fireman carry into the ocean. So normally when I get a fireman carry, let's say I go left arm on their arm, right arm between their legs, I'm gonna throw them right to left. They're gonna come over and they're gonna, they're gonna fall to the side. If you wanna throw them into the river, you can get them on their shoulders and just, boop, throw them back. Combination, jab, right hand, spinning kick, and axe kick. Punching combination, body head. He does a great job of mixing in his attacks. He'll go punches to the head, punches to the body, kicks to the head, kicks to the body, straight attacks, spinning attacks. That's what you want to do. Always keep your opponent off balance. If you just stick to one thing only, they start adapting to it. Kick to the 
ahead. Slow motion for effect. Dodge and go. All right. Sometimes you just need to regroup, right? You're in a confined area with a bunch of, I'm assuming, high school kids with bats and bad attitudes. Delinquent students. That's what they are. You never want to mess with delinquent students. Punching combinations. You can hit two guys at one time. That's always helpful. Get that guy out of the way. Kick to the body. Kick to the head. Kick to the face. Combinations. And foot sweep. God, I'm so jealous. He's got a great foot sweep. Yep, every time you fall, get back up. Grab the throat and take down. So this is kind of like the showtime kick. Kick, kick, kick. Kick to the body, kick to the head, spitting attack. And get ready for the next guy. Body kick, done. Is the bat the whole time? Yeah, it could have been a lot easier. Just use the bat. Bam! Spinning attacks with the bat are great. Just keep the momentum going, right? Like Homer Simpson, I'm just gonna go like this. If you get in the way, it's your fault. Just keep doing that. That's the other part of fighting in streets. If a guy's got a knife and you don't, if you have to show any of this video to your kid, just show that one. The guy's got a knife, run away. Problem solved. It's really hard to use a strike to hit two opponents at once, because if I'm throwing this big, wild roundhouse kick and I hit something, all force has counter force. And so it's gonna kind of go back. But if I'm so powerful that I can kick the head and just keep going, do it, like a weed whacker. Body, kick the head, body, head. Again, keep mixing it up. Get up, get up, get up. Get out of the way, do a little pirouette, and go back to kicking. Punching combinations, great. Elbow, up elbow, boom. It's a rare up elbow. Normally you do it with the front arm, you do it with the rear. Punch to the body, spinning attack. Spinning back fist, great way to end a combination. Very devastating, but it leaves you off balance. Big powerful hook to end that combination. And that guy's on fire. And he has a knife. Now you can't even get close because you'll burn yourself. And the spinning, flipping DDT. Fire. Probably smells terrible. Punching combination. Oh, and he just got stabbed. Cartwheel kick. You don't see that very often. The jumping, spinning, foot stomp. What's the problem? You think you'd be used to strangers attacking him by now? What's your problem? This is so weird. Yeah, what have you been doing all game? Kick the table. Use the chair. Real kick to the head. Use the chair again. Double chair attacks. Dual wielding chair. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Oh, uh, blocking with the forearm? Yeah, dude, don't do that. Just take it in the shoulder, right? Block like this. He just took out four dudes with one table. All right, one dude's dead. He's not gonna be talking, that's for sure. Keep going, jumping kick, two guys at once. Love it. Trademark, sliding knee knockout. Jump out of the way. Kick, kick. Beautiful. He does this combination a lot. Kick to the leg, kick to the body, spinning kick, and then he just starts attacking. Get up, get up, there you go. Spinning kick, you can take out multiple guys at once if you're strong enough. Use the baton, slow motion dead. Only one opponent now. So now you exchange your strategy a little bit. You can grapple a little bit. You can focus on one dude. Maybe set some things up more instead of just blitzing all the time. Not a speck of blood or a bruise on it. Scouting attack, get out of the way. Dodge the kick. Circle, get out of the way. Beautiful. The bad guy came in with way too much power, so we just sidestepped it, hit him from behind. Get up, get up, get up. Kick to the table, get out of the way. Kick to the body, kick to the head, kick to the leg. And punch him to defy gravity. And of course, the spinning DDT. Second only to the sliding knee knockout. I'm not so much really like explaining what's going on as I'm just kind of this guy's corner man. Yeah, foot sweep with the arm, choke slam. And yeah, they're both blocking well. Up, punch, combinations, axe kick. He does a good job of ending combinations with the axe kick because after you throw an axe kick, you're really off balance and your stance is off. So it's like almost impossible to throw another combination after that. So you gotta go axe kick and then you're done. This game's awesome because you get 
It's unrealistic enough where you get the fun fantasy attacks where guys jumping up and doing a 720 kick and kicking seven guys in the head, but they integrated a lot of real fighting. The foot sweeps, the choke slams, kicking low, kicking high, throwing in your combinations, and also the more powerful strikes that the guys are throwing are easier to defend because they take more time, which is very realistic. The quicker, shorter attacks, they're harder to defend, but they don't do as much damage. Big looping attacks, easier to defend because you can see them coming, but they do more damage when they land. So it's a good combination of making sure it's really fun fantasy fighting, but with enough real fighting elements for me, you know, my ears to perk and really enjoy. All right, that's it for me. For more Experts React on Gameology, make sure you give them a follow on Facebook and on YouTube as well. If you want more of me, you can follow me on social media, on Instagram and Twitter, at RJ Clifford MMA for all of my professional kicking thoughts and opinions. Till next time, later. More Gameology video. Oh, time. Three, two, one. Let's roll. Three, two, one. Sweet. Do, do we know this guy's, does this guy have a name? All right.